I would now like to introduce uh, Rick Garcia, who will be joining us by Zoom. He is the director of the Colorado Department of Local Affairs. And Rick has had a, a life of public service, elected office, and now brings his skills and his talents to um, the state and in charge of the Department of Local Affairs, DOLA, if that's a familiar term. But just mentioning that DOLA's role in rural Colorado is critical. And also the resources that DOLA, the Division of Housing, and so forth, can bring into our communities to help us solve our problems. So I'm just going to say, now unfortunately, Rick can't see us, but we can see him. So welcome, Rick, and we're grateful that you're here this morning. Can you hear me? Uh, thank you, Gail, and good morning to the Roaring Fork River Valley communities that are participating today in this wonderful regional uh, summit on affordable housing issues. I'm sorry I can't be with you uh, in person. And uh, it was great to hear the governor's uh, video. I joined a bit late, so I didn't catch everything. So I may be a bit repetitive in some of my remarks, but Gail, thank you for the invitation. And I wanna share with you a bit about why we're in this circumstance that we are facing a housing crisis all through our state uh, and certainly in uh, particular counties in Western Colorado are experiencing similar uh, kinds of challenges. I think the governor probably mentioned that uh, our issue primarily is with housing supply. And I think we all know that our population has grown in our state uh, clearly uh, by 15% over the last two decades, but our housing construction uh, production has decreased by 40%. And that has really pushed up housing prices and costs throughout our entire state. There are many factors that are associated with uh, uh, the supply issue. The COVID-19 pandemic clearly uh, aggravated the circumstances and uh, brought this to the forefront, I think, more, more recently. The housing growth uh, factors and uh, compared to our housing number of housing units, our state demographer uh, reports that uh, in the last decennial count, that's between 2010 and 2020, Colorado built 278,000 housing units. The, the decade prior, that would be 2000 through 2010, uh, Colorado built 405 housing units. So no surprise that we are in a shortage of uh, housing driving up, driving up cost. Uh, obviously the Great Recession uh, had a uh, significant uh, impact on housing units being developed throughout our state. Uh, our population growth remained fairly stable during those last two decennial count periods. But starting in 2017, housing construction has started to return to pre-recession levels, over 40,000 units per year. In both 2022 and 2023, and this is recent data from the state demographer, housing construction is expected to reach over 50,000 units. That's good news. Housing units are starting to tick up. However, Colorado continues to experience a shortage of affordable housing units to the tune of 121,000. Know, that's nearly half of our population is still consider, considered cost burdened, which we all know means paying more than 30% of their annual or monthly uh, annual income on housing costs. The good news is that over the course of the last few years uh, and more recently, Congress has appropriated the American Rescue Plan Act dollars. We've been fortunate in Colorado and specifically here at the Department of Local Affairs and the Division of Housing that we received $1.4 billion of American Rescue Plan Act dollars, as well as some other state stimulus funds to construct new housing all over the state. In fact, in the fiscal year ending last June, which is FY22, our Division of Housing has awarded over $244 million in funding to grantees and borrowers uh, throughout that period. That uh, supported a wide range of different uh, AMI levels throughout Colorado and specifically regions, including many in the, uh, uh, the Roaring Fork Valley communities, both rural, rural resort, and a combination of rural and rural resort uh, economies have all, all participated. That award or that uh, funding level has been able to allow us to create over 12,000 additional rental, single family workforce housing units to serve a range of area medium incomes 
from 60 to 140 percent of the uh, uh, of AMI uh, throughout the state. Let me just mention a few of these projects the governor did as well uh, in Western Colorado. Uh, Spring Creek Village in Gibson uh, was awarded funding from Dole in the last few years. Obviously the popular Basalt Vista uh, in Basalt also has been awarded as well as a project called Red Hill Lofts in Carbondale, uh, Rifle, Maxwell Heights, and more recently, a, the purchase of the old parachute in, in parachute uh, through a program we initiated called Operation Turnkey has been acquired to help create new affordable housing in that, that community. Uh, more recently, the 2022 legislative session uh, has been uh, very good to DOLA in the Division of Housing. Uh, they have appropriated uh, several million dollars of ARPA related uh, funding. Most of you are probably aware of some of these programs, but let me just highlight a couple of those. Senate Bill 22-159 is the Transformational Affordable Housing Revolving Loan Fund Program. Obviously that's providing flexible, low interest uh, housing, obviously below market rate uh, for permit loan and construction financing for eligible projects. One of the most popular programs, which has been oversubscribed to date is uh, House Bill 22-1304, that's the Transformational House uh, Grant Program that appropriated $138 uh, million, which half of that is guaranteed to benefit uh, non-urban communities around our state. In addition, we also received a $25 million appropriation that we're passing through to our friends at the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority to boost up their middle income access program. Uh, most of you may know that this is a program designed primarily to expand middle income access to those individuals who make too much in rural parts of the state to qualify for government subsidized uh, housing, but uh, obviously are still out of reach to reach uh, market level uh, housing. This program will be enhanced uh, our friends at Chaffa are already marketing this program. It's been established for a number of years, but uh, we feel like this $25 million boost will be a gap financing opportunity for many of uh, affordable housing projects, particularly in Western Colorado. And then also I wanna highlight House Bill 22-1282, which is the Innovative Housing Incentive Program. And this program uh, was funded through the Office of Economic Development and International Trade intended to support businesses located in Colorado that have 500 fewer employees and are manufacturers of house uh, modular or factory built types of housing. Funding may be awarded through these grants for operating support to these companies and incentives for units they're manufacturing that are at certain AMI levels being placed throughout the state. But you know, in order to actually build more housing and spark more lower cost housing in 2021, uh, the state uh, moved to dismantle government barriers, enhance private property rights of, of private property owners, and reduce burdensome land use and zoning regulations. That year, House Bill 21-1271 for $35 million was introduced, a planning and incentive program that, frankly, I'm happy to say most of the dollars have already been exhausted over the last couple of years. And many local governments, surprisingly many in uh, rural parts of our state uh, have chose to enact land use and zoning changes to accommodate uh, housing projects. Let me just refer a couple of those uh, awards that have been made to communities in the Roaring Fork River Valley. Uh, a planning grant was made available to the West Mountain Regional Housing Coalition, which includes the towns and cities of Glenwood Springs, Carbondale, Basalt, Snowmass Village, Aspen, Eagle County, and Pickin County. Uh, their work primarily is designed to, to uh, form a regional approach uh, and form a regional audit of the existing policies, programs, and codes to inventory vacant government controlled sites and implementation strategies and policies. Very much uh, in tune with uh, your purpose of gathering today. Uh, a couple incentive awards through the 1271 program have also been awarded uh, to the city of Glenwood Springs, to the Habitat of the Roaring Fork Valley Partnership, a project consisting of eight for sale condo units, uh, by the way, all electric with on-site renewable generation. Very exciting. Another, another uh, uh, incentive program for 1271 actual grant dollars uh, was awarded to the town of Eagle 
Habitat of Humanity of Vail Valley. This is a partnership consisting of 16 units and eight duplexes uh, built by a modular uh, housing uh, manufacturer uh, here in our state, uh, Feeding West. Uh, again, very exciting to uh, uh, have, have these programs uh, announced. But uh, in addition, uh, some of the uh, opportunities to see these uh, communities make uh, land use changes include things like subsidized or reduced local uh, review fees, expedited development review, things like density bonuses are being put into laws, ADUs being created by use by rights, reduced parking requirements for affordable housing projects, and land donation acquisition and land banking programs. All uh, important qualifying strategies that local governments are stepping up to support. So now what other opportunities does the state and the Division of Housing have on the horizon to increase housing supply in our state? Well, most of us are probably aware of the passage of Proposition 123, which uh, instructed the state to uh, set aside $300 million annually to create affordable housing initiatives. And as you know, this was approved by the voters in last November's election. It created the State Affordable Housing Fund, which 40% of those dollars will come to uh, DOLA, to our Division of Housing, 60% uh, and to the Affordable Housing uh, financing fund, uh, which will flow through the Office of Economic Development and International Trade and ultimately will be administered by the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority. We're working currently uh, in implementing these programs, uh, and we, we certainly want to uh, uh, keep these in sight of what the voters expected. And uh, we want to also uh, make you aware that uh, some of these resources will be available for things like homelessness services, rental assistance, home ownership support, eviction, defense, concessionary debt financing, equity investing, and land banking programs. Uh, we have a couple of programs uh, known as uh, uh, local community engagement sessions. One took place just last week. We have two more scheduled coming up, one this Friday, March 24th, and another one on April 4th. We're doing those with our partners at OEDIT and CHAFA. So another, uh, initiative that the state uh, is working on and it's a matter of what I would describe as mixed state and local concern. The governor alluded to this, but like many other states and local communities throughout our nation, Colorado continues to face a, an affordability challenge. Several factors pose barriers to adding new housing, but one important barrier is when local use land codes restrict land for only single family detached homes. This limits the ability to add a wider variety of more affordable types of housing, such as accessory dwelling units, townhomes, duplexes, triplexes, and other multifamily housing. The dollars that we've have poured since 2019 in our state into affordable housing has largely just subsidized the cost of market rate housing construction. But uh, we've seen some rents lower as a result and some home ownership opportunities also be materialized. But in order to really build more housing options at a lower cost for all Coloradans, we need to ensure that we're removing these obstacles uh, erected by, by governments, increasing the rights of private property owners and scaling back regulations. It is really crucial that we have more multiplex housing types made legally available as long as long-term solutions to our state's housing shortage. The state demographer recently uh, uh, supplied me with some data for, for this uh, opening remark that's uh, actually showing some promise. Uh, we have seen a slight increase in uh, multi-family as well as uh, smaller plex units like duplexes, threeplexes, and fourplexes increase in our state over the last uh, couple years. Uh, in fact, permits for building more than five units have doubled uh, in just uh, the last year. Multifamily permits have increased from a third to all permits to almost 50% of total permits. In so, 2021, yeah. building permits reached their highest level since prior to 1980. Total, total permits uh, for 2022 are expected to be uh, to deliver about 50,000 units in our state. And even here or there uh, in the Roaring Fork River Valley, the county's uh, building permits in Garfield and Eagle counties have increased in 2021, especially for single family units or and also for more than uh, five units, also considered multifamily uh, 
uh, construction. And in Pickens uh, County, housing permits have been fairly stable, but its growth in 2021 has been primarily in the construction or the permits of single family units. In all counties uh, in the Royal Fork Valley area, housing permits for two to four plexus have had little change from the previous years, except for Eagle County has been showing some modest construction of two to four units. And you're not alone. These are uh, data points that actually we've been experiencing throughout our state for the, for the last two decades. So there Rick, has not Rick been I enough. hate to interrupt you here and uh, because you've done, you've done your homework. You understand who we are, what we need, and what an incredible resource you are. I guess I would just highlight the fact that um, in our rural resort communities and communities of the Colorado River Valley, Western Garfield County in particular, joining us today, um, we're, we need help. Uh, we are, this is a crisis. We are at a point that our economies are, are really uh, virtually at risk. We look forward to partnering with uh, Department of Local Affairs and working with you to bring those resources into our region, into our communities, so we can start uh, with your help to address some of these specific issues that we are facing today. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank the governor for being present to us. I know you have, you're going to have staff in the room, and you're, uh, and really Dola does great work for us, but we're going to ask for a little more. So thank you again for being with us, and let yes. us all thank uh, Rick Garcia Gail, for Gail, his it's, moments it's today. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, Gail, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Let me just uh, acknowledge that uh, Olivia Cook, who's our, our field representative for our Division of Housing, is present there with you today, and uh, she will also continue to be a resource uh, for you in the communities uh, in the Roan Fork mm -hmm. River Valley. It was a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll have a great session. And I wish you all well. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Rick. Awesome.